It's time to get your arrows popping. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring and today's tutorial is about solving linear equations part six. That's right. This is the final video in this six part series and we're going to be tackling, let's see, solving linear equations with decimals. That sounds like fun, right? So let's go ahead and check it out. Here we have two examples. One is negative two and five tenths plus a equals negative five and five tenths, while the other, number two, is 11 hundredths y equals one and five tenths plus one tenth y. All right, and let's keep in mind that we'll be utilizing our properties of equality to keep the equilibrium of the equation, keeping both sides balanced at all times so that we can keep the integrity of the equation intact. That's right. So you have your addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division properties of equality that are at our disposal. From here, we have problem number one, guys. And our first step is to isolate the variable. Now, you could just go ahead and use the addition property of equality, guys, and just simply add two and five tenths to both sides of the equation. This is something that you could do. And in simplifying, your additive inverses will cancel out. You'll bring down the variable A, which equals two. It's gonna be a negative value because you have to keep the sign of the biggest value there. So there we go, and then you'll subtract line up your decimals because you're subtracting and you'll have a zero there and five minus two that just gives you a three and you'll end up with negative three which could be written as negative three there you go there's the answer red box it well that's one way to attack the problem so let's see another way to tackle this so if we have the negative two and five tenths plus a equals a negative five and five tenths. Another technique, guys, is to eliminate all of the decimals. And for that, you're gonna to have to pay attention to the smallest place value. So what do I mean by that? I mean like the place value to the right of the decimal, that first one is the tenths place, then two places from the decimal is the hundredths place, then the thousandths place, and so forth and so on. So that's what I mean about place value. So when you're looking at this problem here, your smallest place value is just one to the right of the decimal. So that's gonna be the tenths place. Let's see what happens when you multiply each and every term by the smallest place value, okay? Remember I said the smallest place value in this problem was the tenths place. So I'm gonna multiply everything by 10 because of that. So I'm gonna have 10 times negative two and five tenths, mm -hmm. plus 10 times A, okay? plus 10 times negative five and five tenths. That's what we have. Well, what that does for us guys is it allows us to move the decimal one place to the right. Yeah, so so over here, this is gonna be moved one place to the right. This is gonna be moved one place to the right. And you're gonna end up with the following. You'll have negative 25 plus 10A equals to negative 55. You see, now I'm not looking at any decimals, see? So we use the multiplication property of equality to multiply each and every term by 10. The equation's still balanced, but we were able to eliminate all of the decimals in the equation. Now, even though this is an additional step, for some people, it's just a matter of managing their stress. See, to some people, they're saying, hey, decimals freak me out. But if I can eliminate them, then I could just go through the regular steps like I'm solving any other linear equation. And, and be at peace. Well, well, we want peace. So there we go. So I'm going to isolate the term with a variable by using the addition property of equality. And I'll be adding 25 to both sides of the equation, just like so, guys. Simplifying, the 25s cancel out. We're bringing down 10a, which equals to negative 30. And now you'll be dividing both sides by 10, like so. Simplifying, we find that a equals negative 3 red box it. All right. So you have your options there. Let's call it option A and option B. And let's move on. So here in problem number two, we have the 11 hundredths Y equals one and five tenths plus one tenth Y. Well, once again, let's go ahead and see what happens with both methods. All right. The first method is just to attack the problem like we normally would. Well, for the first method, I would want to get all of the terms with the variable Y on one side of the equation. So I'll be subtracting one tenth Y to both sides of the equation here. That's what I'm going to do. Okay. 
on the left side, 11 hundredths minus 1 tenth, or you can look at it as 10 hundredths. That's the same value, by the way. You'll end up with, you'll end up with 1 hundredths Y. And you can put a zero in front if you like, okay? Then, this will equal to one and five tenths as the additive inverses cancel out on the right. Now, if you're like me, you don't like the way this looks. So I think we can write it better. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's a little better, right? It's a little clearer. So now we're gonna use the division property of equality and you're going to divide both sides by this one hundredth. Okay, just like that. Left side, everything cancels out except for the variable y. Bring down your y and you're looking at a long division problem more than likely, right? Or you can multiply the numerator and the denominator by 100. I think I want to do that. Let's do this. Let's multiply the numerator and the denominator by 100. Why am I doing that? Because the smallest place value in this fraction is the hundredths place. So if I multiply both sides by 100, you're going to end up with, move the decimal over two places to the right, 150 divided by 1. Well, that just equals to 150. Okay? So that's one way of attacking it. I kind of didn't like that last part either. But I'm going to red box it, all right? And mind you, this is not the way I would solve it. I, I would probably solve it the, the second method. Okay, and we're going to do that now. Yeah, let's see what that looks like. So for number two, we're going to do it again. And the second method is I'm looking for the smallest place value. That means that I'm dealing with a hundreds place here, tenths place, tenths place. The winner is the hundreds place as the smallest place value. Two places to the right of the decimal. That means I'll be multiplying each and every term by 100. All right, so let's set it up just like that. Multiplying each and every term by 100. That's right. Going in with a smile, leaving with a smile. Multiplying by 100 will move our decimal two places to the right, people. In each case, that's what's going to happen. So as I bring down my next step, I'm dealing with 11y equals 150 plus 10y. That's what I have. And now I'm going to be getting all of my variables on one side of the equation by using the subtraction property of equality. I'll be subtracting 10y to both sides of the equation, like so. Thank you. And 11y minus 10y, that gives me 1y. You don't need to write the 1 from the variable because it's redundant, okay? So you see 1y, and therefore you don't need to write the 1 in front of the y. And then on the right side, you'll be bringing down the 150. And what happens with your additive inverses, your opposites, the 10y, the negative 10y? What is that? What did you say? Exactly, they cancel out to zero. So let's just cancel those out there. What's the next thing I'm gonna do? Does anybody remember? That's right, I'm going to red box it, people. And that completes our second problem of this video and concludes the video itself. As a reminder, do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Fort Bend Tutoring, and I'll see you in the next series, guys. Peace. Thanks for watching. We appreciate you hanging out with Fort Bend Tutoring. Like the video, comment, and subscribe.